Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Get out your King James Bibles. Turn with me to Psalms 36. I was doing my uh, morning reads, and I came across this verse. I came across this verse plenty of times, but it really hit me about what we're seeing out there in the world today. What's the number one thing that we're seeing out there in the world today? Well, you say, well, sin, this, sin, wickedness, love of money, all this stuff. Yeah, we're seeing that. Um, ungodly people, yes. But this verse kind of hit home, and I wanted to do just a quick video sharing it with you. Okay, Psalms 36, verse 1. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart, someone who's saved, when we look at the wicked, there's no fear of God in their eyes. Hmm. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Uh, anybody in the Bible, when you read about men being preachers of righteousness, calling out the world's wickedness and sin and ungodliness, uh, they're hated. Verse 3 The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. God's wisdom. For man's wisdom, the world's wisdom. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He sitteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Now right there, those verses are good description of this world that we're seeing right now. And the number one cause, the number one stemming cause is that they do not fear God. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we did a study in the past where we went through and talked about a lot of the fearing the Lord being in Christ Jesus had made us unto wisdom and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and everything seems to go hand in hand if you fear God you keep his commandments uh, Ecclesiastes he sums up everything when it talks about there's a time to be born there's a time to die there's a time to laugh there's a time to cry a uh, time to rejoice a time to mourn he goes through and talks about life down here when you get to the end of Ecclesiastes, he says he sums it all up for mankind. And it's simply this. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Okay? Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are re and were created. What pleases God? Keeping his commandments. What motivates us to keep God's commandments? By fearing him. And we look out in this world, and this world doesn't fear him. And we see how bad it's getting, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse, brothers and sisters Christ. We can see it. And my warning to the brethren is this. Okay. Some of the brethren have asked me, why don't I do a lot of videos on worldliness? <laughs> you know, not necessarily worldliness, but on what's going on in the world. But that's worldliness. Because this is what you need, brother says Christ. This is what you need. The Bible says, uh, be not entangled with the affairs of this life who have chosen him to be a soldier. Okay? This world is falling apart because they don't fear God. Okay? There's nothing wrong with doing a Bible study and saying, oh, by the way, what you see out there, that lines up with what we're talking about. That's good. But when you see a lot of these men in ministry that they're straying from this, and it's all about what's going on in the world, what's going on in the world, what's going on in the world, uh, it's drama. And the world's full of drama. The world's full of distractions. The world's full of temptations. Okay? Some brethren have taken it too far and put in temptation in front of you when they do studies, so-called studies. Okay. So this is, not, this is a warning to the brethren in ministry. Make sure that this is what you're doing. Paul was told not to preach the world. Not to have a drama show. Not to have a backbiting and whispering show. You know, like a TV show. Uh, you know, all those talk shows, it's all about backbiting and whispering and drama and name calling and mocking and railing for railing and bearing false witness. And now you got to figure out who's telling the truth and who's lying. And, and they start fighting, just fighting, fighting and devouring one another. Okay, that's not how we're supposed to be, brothers and Christ. Paul was not told to preach the world. He was told to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So for this study, brothers, not really a study, just a quick talk, brothers and Christ. It's about fear of the Lord. We look out in the world and we say, well, this world has no fear of God, and you wonder why everything's getting so bad. 
But my question to exhort the brethren is, how are you doing? Do you still fear the Lord? Or are you starting to get into with the world and start, you know, conforming to the world, loving the world, being a friend of the world, and you get to the point where you stop fearing God? He was like, oh, we're supposed to fear God all the time? I fear God any time I sin. I fear God when I look at how wicked and sinful this world is, I fear God. Okay? When I look at myself, because I'm the only one I can do anything about, I can't do anything about the world. I can preach truth. We can plant seeds, brothers and sisters Christ. But we can be preachers of righteousness. But we can't change the world. They have to come to God on their own and let God change them. Just as he's changed me, just as he's changed you, brothers and sisters in Christ. That being said, this wicked world, uh, I fear my sins. I fear my faults. I fear my weaknesses. I fear God when it comes to me. Okay, not that I, I said it kind of wrong. Like I fear those things. I fear God in those things. Temptation. I fear God in temptation. When I'm being tempted to do something I'm not supposed to do, I turn to God and say, "Lord, I fear you." I, I sit with them all the time and talk to them, and I say, "Hey, I could wake up one morning, my whole garden could be destroyed. All the chickens could be killed by predators. Uh, we have mites. They could be all dead. This house could fall down the hillside. The truck could break down." Uh, God can do all kinds. He can hurt my health. He can do ch the chastisement of the Lord. The Bible tells us that He loves us enough as a father would a ch son. He chastises us as a father would a son to get us back on the right path. To keep us from sin, the lust of the flesh, to help keep the body in check. That's the number one enemy. Your number one enemy is God. Your number two enemy is me, myself, and I. It's a three part enemy. It, it's, it's a tripart, it's a trinity. Me, myself, and I, I know, it's just it's being sarcastic, and I shouldn't, forgive me. But you are your no, a number two enemy, your body of flesh. Okay? God will chastise you to get your body of flesh under control. Put it down. Let your soul uh, be in charge. God's in charge, but your soul, strengthen your soul. So your soul is keeping your flesh down. I was talking to a brother in Christ. One of the reasons we fast, brother says Christ, I was reading this in the Psalms. When you fast... It strengthens your soul. When you're fasting and putting the flesh down, it strengthens your soul. So your soul is in charge and not the flesh. So I always encourage brothers and sisters to fast. At least try, try to get into some fasting once a month, once a week. You know, uh, you can go to two to three days a month. You know, something like that. But try to get into some fasting. It'll help out. But it's putting the flesh down. But I fear God when it comes to this flesh trying to rise up and get the better of me. I fear God when it comes to worldliness, the, the second enemy, the world. I fear God when I, I, I see myself trying to compromise, to get along with everybody. Compromise, 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 just to get along with everybody. Uh, no, I need to stand strong. I need to stand for God's word. Uh, there's a guy, I'm not going to mention names, but there's a guy online that he puts out a lot of Peter Ruckman's videos, yet he also promotes worldliness and fleshliness. And he's doing it with pride. And I'm like, where's the fear of God? Uh, there's other brethren in ministry, how they're mistreating the brethren, they're mishandling the word of God. And I've been there where I've mistreated brethren. I, I, I failed. There's times where I mishandled the word of God, and I took correction and got my heart right with the Lord and got, got back to doing you know, right by the word of God, handling it correctly. But there's some men that just they are not handling the word of God correctly. They're not treating the brethren right. Uh, they're not treating the lost world right. And it's like, where's the fear of God? Okay. But the world comes in. That's the fear of what we're ta I'm talking about. For brothers and sisters in Christ, when you fear God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What it is, is you fear God above anything down here, above this flesh, above the world, and the third enemy, above Satan. Some brethren, the Bible talks about how they have turned from the faith. Uh, they have been, uh, was it, seducing spirits. They've given themselves over by to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, real quick, conscience seared with a hot iron. Right? In the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Thank you, Lord, for helping me with that. With, with a hot iron. Their conscience is seared. What happens? They stop fearing God. They stop fearing God. God stops coming first. His word stops coming first. They start playing God. 
And when they start messing with the book, they start getting into false doctrines. Right? One of the biggest things I've seen, Brother Sis Christ, when it comes to not fearing God, when it comes to the world, is there's brethren, Brother Sis Christ, you start getting things down here, and there's nothing wrong with having blessings. I'm blessed. I'm greatly blessed, praise God. But you get these blessings and you start getting distracted by down here and you stop thinking about up there. Things that are temporal versus things that are eternal. You take your eyes off Jesus Christ and you put it on this world. And one of the things is, is you stop fearing God. You can tell when someone stopped fearing God when they stop looking present tense for that blessed hope. But the day of Christ is at hand. When they turn their back and, oh, Jesus isn't coming back anytime soon. Why is that? They don't fear God anymore. They fear the world. And it's true. Most anybody that I've seen that still tries to profess to believe in the pre time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, brother says Christ, they have turned their back. They call it the eminent return, but the Bible calls it the day of Christ is at hand, looking present tense for that blessed hope. Okay. They start fearing the world. They start fearing what they can lose down here. They start pushing uh, endurance. You've got to endure to the end. Stocking up, you gotta go hide, you gotta stock up, you gotta buy gold and silver, invest in gold and silver, you gotta do all this. We gotta survive it. They start fearing everything down here and they stop fearing God. That's what the world does. Why are we, brothers and sisters, Christ, starting to look like the world and act like the world? Where is the fear of God? The Bible says God will take care of us. We're to live every day for Him and we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. That's what it means to live every day for Him, looking for that blessed hope. That verse right before that, looking for that blessed hope, talks about giving up sin and living right in God's eyes and, and doing right. right. That's what it means to look for that blessed hope. When we look for Jesus to come back any day now, we're going to live for Him and our focus is on living for Him because God could take us home at any moment, whether in life or in death. He could take us home any moment. And we know that. And we fear God. And we say, I need to be busy living for Him. I don't have much time. We have the judgment seat of Christ. There's rewards. I want to get something. I better get busy living for the Lord. I need to get the sin out of my life, put this flesh down. I need to stop conforming to the world, loving the world, being a friend of the world. Now, you can still live peaceably. I just want to throw this in a little side note. The Bible says, if it be possible, live peaceably among all men. Our feet are shod with the preparation of peace. Okay, if it be possible, you can live peacefully among them without loving the world, without being a friend of the world, and without conforming to the world, you can still live peaceably among them. All right? the number one thing that causes problems is this, when you try to witness to them and preach truth to them. All right? I have neighbors that really don't like me, and I have neighbors that reject this, but we live peacefully. Why? Because the Bible tells me I'm supposed to. I don't go out there purposely trying to create enemies. I just preach the truth and the enemies come. That's what happens. But brother says Christ, when you fear God, because you're looking for him to come back any day now. I don't know how I got all the way off on this. Forgive me, brother says Christ, but just I'm just frustrated with some brethren that have turned their back on looking present tense for that blessed hope. And instead of pushing the brethren to look for that blessed hope and to live every day for Jesus Christ, keep your eyes on that blessed hope, that's what it means to live for Jesus Christ. Stay in the Word every day. I just put out a study, uh, Peter Ruckman, and the reason I put it out is I've been saying it and I've been saying it. Start your day with the Word of God. End your day with the Word of God. Start your day with prayer, with the Lord, talking to the Lord. End your day talking to the Lord. Talk to Him about your struggles with the flesh. Talk to Him about your, uh, the world trying to come in and get you away from Him. Talk about Him about the enemies coming in and trying to talk you out of your faith. The true plan of salvation, the doctrines that are in here, Tell, uh, brethren that have fallen away. You know, the number one thing I know is the first step I believe in the falling away, the first step, brothers and Christ, that I've seen, and we're going to talk about the second step, but the first, in another video, but the first step is they stop fearing God. They've been talked out of fearing God and they get distracted with this world and what's down here, and down here becomes more important than what's up there. Paul said to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. He's in strikes between two. And the only reason he's talking about staying down here had nothing to do with all this garbage that's around me, all this so-called wealth, the home, the garden, the chickens, the dogs, uh, the, the beautiful scenery, going for walks, the truck, whatever. I'm talking about me. This isn't why Paul wanted to said he, he was going to stay down here. He wanted to go up to be with Christ. 
You know why he said well, he's going to stay down here? Because it's much needful for you to be here to exhort one another, to encourage one another to keep standing and keep fighting for the Lord, to encourage one of us to go out to be a witness, a living witness. The you part has to do with saved sinners. The you part has to do with lost world. So we can lead people to Christ and be a living witness. Remember, not just a verbal, but a living witness. Okay? But he wanted to go to be with the Lord. But the first step, I think, in the falling away that we read about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is that people are stopped. Not, they're not fearing God anymore. They're getting into the flesh, and then they start fearing the flesh over fearing God. They start getting into the world, and they start fearing the world over fearing God. They start giving in to uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Satan and his ministers, I, call, I say minions, but the Bible says his ministers are also transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay? Satan and his children, you start fearing them and getting into them. Whatever occult that you're a part of, whether it's here on YouTube, or these Babel buildings have become an occult. Well, whatever, I'm of this Babel building, so whatever direction they go, I have to go. Where's the fear of God? If they're going against this book, and 99% of these Babel buildings go against this book, I left 1% just in case, right? they go against this book, you're to stand for the Word of God and do things God's way. You're to fear God. But they don't. I'm of this group, so I have to stick with this group here on YouTube. If I do something wrong, brethren, correct me. Uh, I praise God that this is your final authority, brothers and sisters in Christ. But you've got certain men on in YouTube, a lot of men, where they've got this occult following where whatever direction they go, the people go. They don't fear God anymore, and the Word of God is not the final authority. Even though these men preach, the Word of God is the final authority, yet they themselves like to be the final authority. And they don't care who they mislead. And like I said, their brethren have turned their back on the day of Christ being at hand, what they call the imminent return, but the Bible says the day of Christ is at hand. Are you looking for that blessed hope with the life that you're living? They've, taken, they've turned their back on it. And now they get you distracted by the world and things that are going on in the world. We just read there, the transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. The lost world is always going to be devouring one another, brother says Christ. And it's usually over the flesh. It's over the world, love of money, power, and control. The flesh. And Satan is, who, who's Satan called? Oh yeah, he's called the lowercase g God of this world. They're always going to be devouring one another, Brother Sister Christ, and destroying one another. What sets us apart? We don't get entangled with that mess. They want to destroy each other? Let them. We're here to be a light for Jesus Christ. So those that get tired of all the warring, that get tired of this wicked world and their sin and their wickedness, we're here to be a light to lead them to Jesus Christ. But until they want to go, until they're, they're broken, the Bible says God saveth such that are of a broken and contrite spirit, until they come to God broken and ready for salvation, we're just sitting here being a light for them. We're not supposed to go over there and get entangled with the world and start getting into this mess. Oh, i got to start talking about this in the world. i got to talk about that in the world. i got to talk about this. This right here has the world's number. Brother says Christ, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. You can preach this. A good preacher is going to preach this. And this is going to have the world's number. Everything we see in the world, this can tell us about it. Okay. We don't need to go out of our way to make channels where it's based off of uh, the world, the world, the world, the world. Okay, Good Bible-believing, God-fearing channels on YouTube are getting harder and harder to find. And ones that used to be hardcore Bible-believing, God-fearing channels have kind of strayed from that. The fear of God's not there that strong, or the fear of God is gone. <clears throat> and they start caring more about what's going on in the world than what's going on in the body of Christ in your walk with the Lord, the Word of God. The Bible says we're supposed to hide this Word in our heart. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay? I just read there about how the world does not have fear. Then you read about how the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? Loving Jesus is keeping His Word. If you love me, keep my commandments. If, if, uh, if you love me, keep my words. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. It warns us about the chastening of the Lord for those that belong to Him. It warns about God's wrath and God's judgment on the wicked world. 
We look out there and see how wicked they are. They don't fear God. What sets us apart? What's the number one thing that sets us apart? Well, Jesus Christ. That's the first thing they'll say today. Why? Because we got a lot of false converts out there. The number one thing that separates us from them is, I fear God. And His Word warns me of who God really is, who Jesus is. God manifests in the flesh. God the Father manifests in the flesh. God the Father is the soul. Jesus is the body. They are connected. They are one. Jesus is God Almighty. And this talks about His wrath. God, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Our God has love. Our God is patient, long-suffering, slow to anger, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Willing that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. But He's also a consuming fire. Our God's also just, a, a judge. And He's just. And he's righteous. His judgment is righteous and true. And someday, everyone's going to have to give an account of himself before God. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. To God. Brother Sister Christ. Kind of went off a little bit, forgive me, Brother Sister Christ, just the fear of the Lord. What I'm seeing these last days, the first step to the falling away is the fear of the Lord. Where's the fear of the Lord at? People put it to the side like it's, it's just something you say. It's just something you say. No, where's the fear of the Lord at? Do you actually fear God? That's, what, that's, that's the number one reason I believe a lot of brethren are falling away. Remember, the falling away is it's for saved sinners, not lost. The Bible talks about how by their fruits you shall know them when it comes to false brethren, wolves in sheep's clothing, the children of the devil, his ministers, People coming in saying, I'm one of you, and they're fake. The Bible shows that, hey, eventually that fakeness will be shown, and you can see that they're fake. They might not be able to catch it right away, <clears throat> but over time, <clears throat> through spiritual judgment, using the Word of God as the final authority, he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. I mean, we're prophets in the sense that we tell people, what Jesus did, what Jesus is going to do when he comes back. Right? We tell people about hell. That's a future thing. If they reject Jesus Christ, they're going to hell. Okay? But you have all these false prophets, false converts. Right? We're supposed to try them through this book. There's that. But the falling away is actually brethren, where it says some shall depart from the faith. Depart. In other words, they were in it. They're saved, born again, they believe the Word of God, they've had a changed life. What happens? They hit that first wall, and they start going to the world. They start giving into the flesh, becoming very fleshly, and they come, give into the world. They start becoming very worldly, idolatry, covetousness, which is idolatry. They start turning their back on this book for doctrines of devils, the three enemies. They start letting the three enemies win. Fear of God. That's the first step to the falling away. The fear of God. What's the second step? I found, I'll get into it a little bit here, but 1979, I realized I was watching uh, Tears Among the Wheat, uh, Babylon, uh, Lamp in the Darkness. There's a three part series that I was watching all that. And they made some really good points in there that 1979 is when they finally came out with the One World Bible. And what is it? It's not a book. The One World Bible, the One World Bible is not a book that you can grab and hold in your hand. What's the One World Bible? It's the idea that it's not the Word of God that matters. It's just the message. It's not the Word. It's the message. Well, who determines what the message is? Clearly not the Word of God. Mankind does. That's the One World Bible that we have today. All these Bible versions are all about that. It's not the Word. That's why you can use all these different Bible versions in these Babel buildings. Because it's not the Word of God that matters. The Word of God is not the final authority. Man is the final authority, and it's the message. It's just the message that matters. It's just, you know, don't, don't worry about the Word of God. Just It's the message that you need to focus on. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Not thy message, thy word. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy message. No, it says thy word. If a man love me, he will keep my message. 
No, it says keep his word. Time and time again. Thy word, thy word. Sanctify him through thy truth. Thy message is truth. That's the world today. That's why the falling away is so great today. The fear of God is gone, and this is no longer the final authority. A perfect written word, the word of God, is no longer the final authority. By the way, that verse says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay. Jesus is the capital W word. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth. Capital W word. Maybe we should just race that out and say just capital W message versus the lowercase w M, M message. I'm sorry. Capital M message and lowercase M message. Maybe we should just, That's what the world has done. So it's no longer the, the right Jesus Christ. You can have any Jesus Christ. You're the final authority. Where's the fear of God, brother says Christ? Where's the fear of God? Brother says Christ, I fear for the brethren. I pray for the brethren every day. The falling away is getting worse. I tried, I tried talking to some of the professing brethren out there. Uh, Bible believing, not just the world. I talk to a lot of those professing Christians. But I'm talking about ones that profess to be a King James Bible believing, God fearing man or woman. And I try to talk with them, and a lot of them are infected and diseased with, Yea, hath God said, a better rendering would be. It's not really the words that matter, it's the message. Where's the, and the fear of God, it's almost, it's there a little bit, or it's not there at all. And you ever stop to wonder why or how the falling away got so bad? I know how bad it got. No fear of God. The word of God is no longer the final authority. Brother says Christ, I'm praying for the brethren. I really am. I hope you're praying for me. I hope you're praying for the brethren. We desperately need it in these last days. I learned uh, from the Bible through great men of God, that every dispensation, if you're not dispensational, you're going to make a mess of the scriptures. You'll make a mess of the scriptures. Sorry for that. Hopefully it doesn't overpower the talking. Uh, you're going to make a mess of the scripture, but every dispensation in the Bible ends in apostasy. How does the time, remember the Bible calls this the time of the, uh, the Gentiles, not the church age. We're going to get into that in another study. The time of the Gentiles. How does the time of the Gentiles come in, be fulfilled, come in? It always, every dispensation ends in apostasy. What's the apostasy to say? The brethren are stopped. They're not fearing God as much as they should, or they're not fearing God at all. And the word of God is no longer the final authority. Even though they claim it, you, I'm telling you, this is the brainwashing. And we're going to get into another study about this. You have great men of God that are great proponents of the King James Bible. This is God's perfect written word. This is God's perfect written word. Add thou not to his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. This is the word of God. And yet, you can prove how they add to this book and subtract from this book. You can show it and prove it. That disease is there. The apostasy that we're getting in, in these last days is the brethren stop fearing God. The, his word is not the final authority. And if his word is not the final authority, anything goes. And they're going that way, they're going this way, they're going that way, they're going that way. Not going to hell, but I'm just pointing in all these different directions. They're, everyone's going to, that's truly saved and born again, we're going to heaven no matter what. The Bible says, God knows them that are his. In God's house there's not only vessels of gold and silver, but wood and earth. Some to honor, some to dishonor. And then it tells you how to be that vessel to honor, depart from iniquity. Get back in God's word. Remember, the God's word hides hidden my heart. That's how we get sin out. That's how you depart from iniquity, by taking God's word and hiding your heart and living it. All right? But I'm pointing in all these different directions because all these brethren, anything goes, they go all these ways, except the narrow way, except the one true way. And how to live a life of Christ, living for Jesus Christ, fearing him, hiding his word in his heart, and being separate from this world. That path, there's very few brethren that are still on that path in these last days. A lot of the brethren are over here, are over there. The flesh, the world, Satan. Brother Strath, we need to keep praying. I cannot prevent... God said that this is going to happen. God said the falling away is going to happen. All we can do is prevent the falling away from happening in our own lives. Each individual brother and sister in Christ out there, you need to get back to fearing God. You need to get back into His Word, studying it, hiding it in your heart. The do's and the don'ts. Okay, the do's and the don'ts. People, 
probably get on to you saying, well, you're teaching works-based salvation because I said in Ecclesiastes, he sums it up, fear God and keep His commandments for this is the whole duty of man. And I talked about how pleasing God, what pleases God, keeping His commandments. And some people today will say, well, no, pleasing God is, the, is, is repenting and believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Well, if you read the Pauline epistles, it says, for they have not all obeyed the gospel. They have not all obeyed the gospel. What's the first command for today to, is to obey the gospel, is to get saved. But a lot of people stop there and say, well, that's the only command. Uh, no, it isn't. That's the first command. Obey the gospel. Get saved. Get born again. Then the Bible starts telling you do's and don'ts. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, but let's not stop there. Let's go to verse 10. For we are created in Christ Jesus, after salvation, for we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works that have before been ordained that we should walk in them. Brothers says Christ, get back to fearing God. Get back into this Bible. Hide it in your heart and, and go through your life and say, hey, what lines up with this book and what doesn't line up with this book? And you know what motivates you to line up with this book? The fear of God. Brothers says Christ, today they made God out to be one big teddy bear, like huggable and lovable teddy bear, and the fear of God's gone. And the world, you look out there at this world, I don't need to call out everything out there. You know what sin and wickedness is. You know how they're, everything that's going on out there, brothers says Christ. The solution is this. Fear God and keep His commandments. Did you obey the gospel? In case someone lost comes across this. Did you obey the gospel? I wasn't very... I made that video trying to explain to people, okay, this, this series of videos aren't for you. If you didn't follow the true plan of salvation, I put the true plan of salvation out there, and I pray a lot of brethren that were false got saved. I do. I pray that a lot of the brethren that are saved, that are becoming part of the falling away, started doubting themselves, and they remembered why they got saved, why they needed to get saved, who it is that saved them, and who it is they serve. So I'm going to stop this because he's making lots of noise. Uh, to God, God's will be done. To God be the glory. Um, brothers and sisters in Christ, please, 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 get back in the fear of God. Get back into his word and making sure that this is number one. God is number one. This is number one. And the number one person you're supposed to be pleasing is God. Not this man right here. Not the body of flesh. Not any man that you follow. Not the men in the Babel building system. Not the world. And definitely not Satan and his ministers, his, his, you know, his children, uh, the enemy. Okay. God, make sure you're pleasing God. Make sure you're staying in this book. And I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. I pray this has exhorted you. Get back to serving God. Get back to living for Him. Get busy, brothers and Christ. Time is running out. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, 
and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him.